Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. And this video I actually wasn't gonna make. Um, and I'll, I'll explain why, but I was at work and I was on my break. And coincidentally, like five minutes before I took my break, this news broke. So when I went in the back and I checked my locker, I found my phone, saw the alert, and was like, hey, someone's talking Venom stuff. Let's see what it is. And I saw that it was Collider Video, um, and uh, and on it it was John Schnepp, who I actually know, really nice guy. I've had the privilege of meeting John and a bunch of people at Collider. And John was actually on a panel with me at Comic Con, uh, where he was you know talking about his documentary for the uh, Superman Lives movie that was never made by Tim Burton and Nick Cage. And ever since then, we've kept in touch with each other. We follow each other on Instagram. You know, every time I post something about Venom, he typically will hit like on it. Um, just a really sweet guy, really awesome. He did a book about the band Slayer that I got last year. I picked up the first issue and it rocks so much. Um, so yeah, I really like the guy. Um, but so I was like, all right, it's John Snap. You know, it's Collider though. I have a, like a, it's weird. I have this love hate with Collider. Uh, but I'll get into that in a second. Uh, so I saw that and I was like, all right, let's check it out. What's what's the rumor? And the rumor was it's Tom Holland, Spider-Man from Spider-Man Homecoming and Civil War, Captain America Civil War, is apparently in, according to John Snap, 100% is in the uh, the Venom movie. And yet when he, when they say it's 100%, their own website, uh, Collider, and the, the, uh, the person who wrote this article, his name is Matt Goldberg, uh, he, they still put the word rumor next to it. Um, and every other site that picks up on it also adds the word rumor. So if this was an exclusive, like they claim it was at the beginning of this video where he says, oh, John Schnepp has an exclusive, um, it's then why isn't it concrete? Why isn't it a concrete exclusive? Um, it's, it's still listed everywhere as a rumor. And so for that reason, because I went and looked, you know, spent the last 10 minutes of my break looking, you know, for if anyone could confirm this 100%. And all I could find was that Tom Holland himself was down on the set of Venom, which to me makes a ton of sense because they're filming Avengers Infinity War 2 or whatever it's going to be called. Um, they have that filming in Atlanta and Venom was wrapping up filming in Atlanta because they're going to be heading to San Francisco soon. I think they went, some of them went today, started to move over. So um, so he apparently Tom Holland went down to the set for like two days to check it out. And for me, I'm like, well, yeah, okay, he's Spider-Man. He's playing Spider-Man. Why wouldn't he want to go see what the Venom movie's doing? He's got access to it. He's got to deal with Sony. He's got to deal with Marvel. Why wouldn't he go and get like a tour of the set, talk to the cast, maybe meet Tom Hardy? maybe get a few photos together so that they can use for, you know, promotional stuff later on or just tweet out and be like, hey, we didn't get in the movie together, but at least, you know, we met on camera or at some point, you know, or whatever. Um, could be a million reasons. Uh, yeah, he could make a, maybe make a cameo too, but my logic was why? At this point, why? They, they kept this movie so close to the vest. And I think the reason is, is because they don't want expectations to get out of control. If you see movies like, you know, like Last Jedi, where everyone's theorizing who is Snoke, who is Ray's parents, like who are they, like what's, you know, what's this, what's that, and then they don't get any of those answers, look how disappointed so many people were. Um, Deadpool did a really great job with their marketing and they were in control of everything and they used their star to help drive that control, you know, like and to show like, hey, we know what we're doing. And it seems like Sony's trying to do that here with this. They're trying to get those training videos out there, like, you know, they're trying to get certain things out when they want it out. The, the, the you know, the video where Tom Holl or Tom Hardy, sorry, Tom Holland, I'm talking about Spider-Man so much now, uh, Tom Hardy and Ruben Fleischer were talking to the crowd of Brazil. They shared that with everyone. Um, they, you know, they did things like have the you know the the big black blanket kind of thing go over the whole crowd to make it look like a symbiote moving and stuff. I mean, they, everything is pretty planned. They have the picture that shows the the questions for the Life Foundation on it. The Tom Hardy. I mean, everything seems like they're trying to control the narrative, like most movies do. I've worked in marketing. I've worked in ev you know like advertising. I've done all these things, and they really want you to not have too high expectations and too low. They want you going in with a certain mindset so that you'll hopefully enjoy the movie the way it's meant to be enjoyed. They're not trying to steer you wrong, steer you clear. Maybe some of the trailers might do that or deliver different kind of expectations to you, but then they try to rein it back with the next trailer. If the first trailer is more action, they try to put more horror or whatever in the next trailer. You know, they they try to control it the best they can, and they do the best they can can. But then you have sites out there like Collider who just throw theories and, you know, fan things out there all the time. And these people, the thing about this is like, I know they're going to be like, you know, well, hey, we're 
we're just a bunch of people, like regular nerd people, who do a show together. The only difference between me and you is that we have a set and you don't. And it's like, no, but they're with that set, with those connections you have, with the, the people you talk to, there should be some type of code. And for me, if someone gave me privileged information, which I've had many times before, and never made videos on them unless I was told I could, uh, I would not make a video on something just for views or just to get my name in some headline or get, you know, be the guy who revealed Tom Holland. Like, why would you, if this was true, why would you spoil it in this way? If you were some Sony person that fed this information, why would you have it come out on a show that can't even get their cameras working properly when the news is being delivered? The, the screen was completely black. It was almost like Venom was trying to stop them from saying it. Uh, it just, it was so unprofessional for me. And, and, and that's not trying to slam John or anything. That's just kind of the mentality of the Collider videos. Like I said, I've met most of these people individually and I like them all. They're all very, they were all very nice to me in the context that I met them in. Um, they may all hate me now. I'm being critical of them, but the, the point is, is that, you know, this, this kind of information, like you shouldn't rush to get it out there. And they rushed it so much that he spit it out during the tech problems. And, uh, and to me, it's like, if you were at Sony, I would be so bummed. That that's how the news of Tom Holland uh, being in our movie got out there. Um, I, it, it would bum me out. Like, I'd be like, oh, well, that's the last time I used them as a source. Uh, it just, it just, just is not professional in my opinion. And again, if someone told me this stuff uh, and they, and whether the, if they told me I could say it or not, obviously that dictates it, but I would make a, I would try to do the best I can. I'd make a, a special video on it, be one-on-one. -on -one. I've seen Collider do that where it's just one person and they're saying like, hey, we got an exclusive, blah, 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 blah. And there's like cameras show up, show footage of Tom Holland on the set. Like that's how you do a real reveal. That's how you know that it's true. When it's something like this, where there's just a bunch of talking heads sitting around a camera and they're speculating, I mean, half the people on the panel didn't even believe him when he said it. They were like, uh, okay, because even Perry Nimroff said, we're in the mindset that this is a solo Venom movie without Spider-Man. What sense does it make to have Spider-Man in this movie? If you're not gonna have Spider-Man be the first host of the costume, if you're not going to have Spider-Man come from outer space in the Secret Wars with the costume, uh, if you're not going to have uh, Spider-Man ruin Eddie Brock's life and then pass the costume on to him in a church scene, uh, then why have Spider-Man just make a cameo in it? Why have Eddie Brock be the first host and then go out of your way to write a story where he's the first host, where the Life Foundation ruins his life or some other source or whatever. Um, I don't know. If, we still don't know if they'll do Sin Eater or not. Uh, if we, you know, It's like you go through all what they're doing in this movie and it's like they're going out of their way to tell a solo Venom story. What sense does it make to have Spider-Man walk by him and go like, hey, jerk, watch where you're going or, or swing by or whatever. I mean, if you want to do like him on TV and you're like, hey, it's set in the same universe, fine, whatever. I mean, that doesn't take away from the movie. But John Snap is saying, no, this is it. Like his quote is, Spider-Man is gonna be in Venom. For the last couple of months, we've been hearing how Sony is keeping it all separated and Spider-Man is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but every other character that's in Spider-Man Universe is separate. All I'm saying is that Spider-Man, and I'm talking about Tom Holland's Spider-Man, is gonna be in Venom. So he's pretty dead set. I don't know who he talked to, if he talked to the director or the writer of the movie or you know Tom Hardy himself or Tom Holland himself or whatever. I know John has you know a lot of connections. He makes some really good content with his documentaries and his movies and stuff. So I don't know, I, there, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, it's possible, sure. But at, I'm kind of like, but what's the point? And, uh, and I, so I want, I guess my goal here, if people wanna know my thoughts on this, I just want your expectations to be tempered. If you're excited about this, that's great, be excited. Uh, I know if I was like, let's put like this in perspective for me. Spider-Man Homecoming, I like the movie, but I don't, it's not my favorite Spider-Man movie. I like it more than Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, and I like it more than Spider-Man 3, but that's that's it. Um, but those all three of those movies, I don't like at all. So with with this movie, like with Homecoming, I, I just like it. I just I don't love it, but I like it. Spider-Man 2, for me, was my favorite Spider-Man movie. And if someone was telling me, hey, that Spider-Man is going to now be in the X-Men movie by Fox, like they made a deal and he's going to be an X-Men, um, I, I don't know what I would do. And I, and I, because I want it so badly, I would give in to that and be like, oh, I can't wait, I can't wait. And it would raise my expectations. And then every time I saw a trailer and I didn't see him, I'd be like, oh, they're just saving him, they're saving him. Then you get to the movie and then you get let down. Like I've been young you know, before, I know what it's like. I'm 35 now, I know what to expect. I know how to temper this stuff. Is it out of the realm to think Tom Holland could be in this movie? Absolutely not. I do not think that is impossible. Um, but do I want him to be? Not really. I, I like him. He's a good kid. 
But I would like, you know, there's what they're setting up with the Spider-Man animated movie with Miles Morales. They're saying that, you know, he's that's enter the Spider-Verse, right? Or whatever it's called, into the Spider-Verse. And it's him and he meets an alternate universe, Peter Parker, who's like 30 years old um, or, or 40 years old or whatever. He's like older. Uh, so it's going to introduce the concept of multiple realities uh, with Spider-Man. And that's also something that Marvel Universe is probably going to be introducing as they go into phase four. And if they bring in the Fantastic Four and Doctor Strange, they've already started with Doctor Strange and then also the micro universe with the uh, Hank Pym and stuff, so uh, and Ant Man and Scott Lang, so they've already are touched on alternate dimensions. So it could be, you know, maybe Venom just exists in an alternate Marvel dimension where you know he doesn't have a connection to Spider Man. And then maybe if you ever want to see them on screen one day, you could have them cross dimensions through the Spider Verse, you know, whatever they're calling that, you know, world they're building with Miles. So that's just a theory of mine. That's how I would push it. Um, that way things don't get too convoluted and you kind of can keep it separate still if you wanted to. Um, you know, kind of how like Flash and Supergirl on the CW universe are two different worlds, but they meet up still because they go through dimensions from time to time. That's not so hard for people to wrap their head around and that's not a confusing thing, I, I don't think. Um, but I don't know, for this, I, I'm sure John Snap has a reliable source and I'm sure he was told information along these lines, but from what I gathered and the news I looked at, all I could find was that Tom Harlan, uh, Holland visited the set of Venom. And that to me makes a ton of sense because like I said, they're both filming in Atlanta or they were up until like today, I think they're starting to move the Venom stuff to San Francisco. But if this was like a day or two ago and you know, he was just coming by to see them do their last days of filming um, and maybe get like a couple promo shots with Tom Hardy and just be like, you know, like I said, as jokes for later on and be like, hey, we weren't in the same movie, but we're in this picture together and we're punching each other or something. And maybe he just got a tour of the set. Maybe he's just a fan and he's just interested. He's like, hey, I'm kind of curious what you guys are doing with the Venom movie. I want to see it. You know, uh, for all we know, it's just stuff like that. Uh, and until I see, like I said, a separate video of John Snap in front of a camera with footage, you know, and everything th that is approved by Sony, then it's just a rumor. And and that's the thing about Collider is it, they should be, they're, they, they're better than me. They have a set. They have cameras uh, that work sometimes. Uh, they have writers. They have people that research stuff for them. I'm just a dude at home who has a full-time job and who's also writing novels and, ha and streaming. I have like very little free time to do stuff like this, but I do it because I love it. And I take it seriously because if I'm going to do a show about Venom, I want to have some level of integrity with journalism. I want to try to take this seriously. Uh, it's, I'm tying it into my my health, my physical health, my mental health, uh, which is something Eddie Brock struggles with a lot. Um, he certainly has an image problem, I think, with the amount of times he works out. Uh, but also I know, you know, it, it, it gets him through tough times and things like making these videos get me through these tough times. And I'm, I'm not trying to be dramatic here. I just think like if I was given priv privileged information I would think twice about sharing it and uh, and I would try to share it in a way that Sony wouldn't be, you know, bummed out by. And I think this, like with this quick quote, as the camera went to black and the camera wasn't even working, um, if I was a, if I was the person who fed this information, I'd be kind of bummed that that's how the information got out there. And, uh, and honestly, there's a reason why everyone's reporting it as a rumor because it was handled poorly you know the information getting out there is handled poorly and then when the person says like oh you don't have to believe me take it with a grain of salt you're kind of like okay well then i will take it with a grain of salt because uh because now i'm not even sure you're confident on the information you have um and then like i said the other people who were on the panel with them didn't either and even the person who wrote this article matt goldberg doesn't seem sold on it either so um i don't know so i i don't know you guys asked you know uh what i what i thought of this and then that's what i thought um we had a comment here from uh, from D Baca, and uh, so when I was at work, I was like, yeah, I, I don't know if I'll report on this. And D Baca commented like two minutes after I said that, and I was like talking to my coworker. I'm like, I started laughing. I go, I got to go in the back and answer this real quick if you don't mind. So I went in the back and answered D and said, yeah, sure, you got me right at the right time. I will make a video on this. Uh, so my final thoughts. If this happen, if Tom Holland's in the movie, I don't know why. I really don't. Uh, would it be cool? Sure, I like him. He's a good Spider-Man, uh, so I wouldn't be bummed about it. But um, I also feel like it would be one of those moments that took you out of the movie, where you're like, ah, oh, man, I was on this road and this journey with Venom, and now I, I'm just going to be thinking about Spider-Man from now on and when he's going to fight Spider-Man. And I know there's nothing that's going to prevent that. We're all going to constantly think that and hope that one day these two cross paths. Uh, but let's worry about that 
down the road and let's focus on just getting a, a Venom movie right before we start tying it into everything because that's a problem a lot of these movies make you know when they try to do shared universe stuff is they plan it from the beginning and and I'd rather them focus on Venom and then I guess they're also focusing on Morbius and, and Silver Sable and Black Cat that's already too much to focus on for me um, to have faith in it but I'm trying to be optimistic so those are my thoughts um, but John Schnepp he's a good guy I don't have anything against the people at Collider, uh, you know, directly or, or think ill of them at all. I just, uh, the show to me is just, I, I don't know, I, I unsubscribed to them a while ago because I just, like, after John Campia came on there and he would just, would, you know, swear up and down and be like, F you, Warner Brothers, how could you let Ben Affleck get away? But he knew that Ben Affleck was already having personal problems and he already knew Ben Affleck was going to go away. Apparently he knew about um, some, you know, some of the stuff with um, Zack Snyder's like, you know, family issues, but still reported like, you know, on other things that, that that would make you think he didn't know that. And then when it came out, he's like, yeah, some of us know these things happen and we knew about it behind the scenes and we just didn't report on it. It's like, but then don't act like the other route. Don't go the other way with it. Don't act like, you know, you're slamming people and you're yelling at people for screwing something up when you know they're not screwing something up, You when you know they're going through something personal. And that's the problem with uh, Colliders that a lot of times they just came across like that. And then they brought in Jeremy Johns, who, you know, he's a fine YouTuber and all, and I know he's a very big channel, uh, but uh, that guy doesn't really give you any substance when he reviews stuff. And you can see clearly he just wakes up, walks out of bed, and goes into that studio, and just like, hey, I'm here, and he doesn't take any notes, and he doesn't take his job seriously, and it's unprofessional, and when I see that level of unprofessionalism, as a, someone who has worked hard his whole life, and continues to work hard through health problems, just trying to get through the day, and I see someone waste potential, it bums me out, and it, so I unsubscribe, and I've unsubscribed to a lot of channels that I thought had potential, and then lost me because they don't tap into it. Um, so yeah, that's my little venom. I'm going to spit <laughs> at them, but nothing, obviously, you know, I, I want those guys, they make their own kind of show. They they have, they have target a specific audience and their fans love them. I'm not trying to take any fans away from them and I'm not trying to, you know, I don't want you guys to go hate on them or anything. These are just my views and my perspective on what I've seen uh, from their channel. And John's a good guy and I'll still pick up his Slayer comic and anything else he releases because he's a good guy. And I believe he does have a source. He knows a lot of people in the industry. Uh, but just the way this information came out, it's like, oh man, I would, I wish it was handled with a little bit more care and, and told to us in a more serious tone. But because it wasn't, because it was just slung out there at the beginning of the episode so they can just gloss over it and move on to the, the real news, then that to me means it's it's probably just bogus and that he that that it's just Tom Holland visiting the set and it wasn't anything to do with him filming a scene. Uh, but I don't know. Time will tell, obviously. I hate saying that where it's like, oh, I guess we'll find out October 5th. I hate when, you know, when, the, movie, you know, when the movie comes out. I hate ending on that note, but I guess it's true. We'll see it in the trailer or we'll see it in the movie, but uh, what I might, my thing to you guys is just don't get your hopes up too much because I don't want you to hate the movie just because Spider-Man wasn't in it. Um, hate the movie if it's not good, but don't hate it just because you were promised Spider-Man by YouTube channels and not the studio and you didn't get it because that's not fair to the movie. Those are my thoughts. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I appreciate your time. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.